guys, welcome back and thank you so much for watching. I've got a bit of a fashion video for you guys today. Um, I thought I would look back to this time last year and have a look through the outfits that I was wearing then. My necklace is a, the wrong way around and it's going to bug me. Um, yeah, have a look at five different outfits that I was wearing this time last year because I thought it would be a good way to not only work out which pieces I'm still wearing now and which have had longevity, um, to look at different ways that my style has changed, but quite specifically for me, I remember this time last year was a point in kind of relatively minor transition in my style where I suddenly felt like I really understood what my style was a lot more. Um, and I would say in some ways it became a bit more normcore, to, to use that term, which I don't particularly love, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I remember just feeling quite confident in my outfit choices around this time last year. Um, and I always think it's a good time of year styling wise when you get some nice days, some cooler days. Like today's at 18 degrees and sunny, which is perfect for more transitional looks. So hopefully it would be a bit inspirational too. So what I've done is I've picked out five on my Instagram, which have now closed the app and so have gone back to the top of my feed. So we just need to do some extreme scrolling to get a year back. Um, so I thought I would do that, I've already picked out the five outfits and then I have recreated them, some of them are more or less identical, or changed pieces slightly to how I think I would wear it now. Um, just one second, I'm only in, De I'm only in December, Wait, oh, November, we're nearly there. I deliberately went around the end of September, October mark um, and chose looks that I'd worn when I was in London. So, numero uno, where is my numero uno? Oh, this one was the first one that I went with. I'll obviously insert a picture so you can see it better. Here I'm wearing my Celine loafers, white weekday jeans, the row style, Uniqlo t-shirt and Chloe bag. This was on the 4th of September, 2018. That Chloe bag, I don't use anymore. In fact, I think I, I think I sold it. I can't actually remember, but, um, it's kind of been replaced style-wise in terms of its colour by my Bottega bag, which you guys and I bought um, maybe two months ago now, uh, which I still absolutely love. So yeah, the Chloe bag was sent to me and I didn't really like it, but it was never one that I would have necessarily gone out and it wasn't one of the it bags that I really fell for, basically. So the rest of this outfit, though, I've kept the exact same. Um, obviously, my hair is very different now, but these jeans are so, so good. They're, they're actually quite stained. It's only light stains, but I remember watching the uh, World Cup in them last summer, and they got covered in beer, and it's kind of never fully come out of them. It's not too obvious, but I'm slightly aware of it. Um, but I still love them. Obviously, the Celine loafers, which I've had for three years now, nearly, or oh, two and a bit. And I bought them when I was in London, so it can't be three years, but I adore them still so, so, so much. Every time I put them on, I'm like, these shoes are just some of the best. And the Uniqlo t-shirt is my black men's Uniqlo U one. I have washed this so many times, and it is still perfectly black. It is still got its shape. It is hold, hold, held up, sorry, so, so, so well. I still can't recommend it enough. So. All in all, I would definitely wear this exact outfit again now. I've swapped the bag and also added on my totem kind of cardigan jacket thing. Uh, just for if it was a bit cooler, um, which it has been for the past few days, to make the styling. Well, that's just a piece I didn't have in my wardrobe then, uh, which I do now, which I thought worked really well with that outfit. And I've been really enjoying wearing that jacket with white trousers. Um, really hoping you can't hear drilling in the background because... There's some drilling in the background, as there always is. Oh, outfit number two, this was on the 10th of September. I can so clearly remember this time, I was just suddenly into like, these shorts in particular from Mango, and I still have them, and I still love them. And wearing pieces like this was the first time I'd worn really baggy shorts. Like, I'd always been to oversized things, but it tended to be more like blazers, boyfriend jeans. But around this time, I started to feel more comfortable in wearing things which are slightly more flattering as well and feeling really, really, really good for it. So I have on here those shorts, um, the same Uniqlo t-shirt, lots of gold necklaces. One of them is the one that's still behind the bloody radiator. Um, I'm gonna have to really address that again soon. Which I, I wear just really fine chains now. Um, and then my Everlane blazer, I've swapped that blazer for, I still have that blazer, I still love that blazer. I've swapped it for the Frankie Shop one, just to make something a bit different, my wool grey Frankie Shop. I actually think I prefer how this Everlane one looks in this picture, you know? Because um, it just feels a little bit more chic for not being so oversized. 
So either either do work, but that Everlane blazer, I think I'm pretty sure they still do it. You know, it's still one of the best pieces I've ever had from Everlane. And then the belt I have on here is the Topshop one I used to wear a lot, which I don't have anymore because um, it literally broke the, um, where the holes were. Um, and I now wear nearly every single day my Chanel belt instead of my vintage Chanel one that I got on Vestiaire Collective. So the styling is really similar. I just got a better quality belt and it's been well worth it. Trainers I have on here are some of my Vega ones. Vega, Vega. Every time I forget how to say that brand, um, I still have them and I still really like them. They're kind of a bit short and uncomfortable on the toes. So for this one, I put on my Muji ones, which I think are also a great option if you're looking, at, looking for a style of trainer like that because they are very affordable as well. Um, oh, I've got one here. What date is this one on? This was on the 21st of September. This outfit, I remember really liking at the time, but I wouldn't wear it again now. I wanted to put in one like this that seemed, just showed how certain things in your style can change, even though I felt great in it at the time. I have on um, some black trousers from Under the Stories, which I still have. I still am yet to find the perfect pair of black tailored trousers. When I find it, you guys will be the first to know. I think it's one of the hardest things to find. I just, high end, high street, have never managed to get the right pair. These are really, really great. The, the thing that I would want differently is I'm always after something that's slightly more straight through the leg. But yeah, I still have these and love them. And then this jumper I don't have anymore. It was from, I think it's from Gestus, this pink jumper. When I did my big clear out not so long ago, I um, got rid of all of my coloured knitwear because it just wasn't something that I was wearing at all. And for how I was seeing my, what my style develop, it wasn't part of what I thought would be how I wanted to envision my wardrobe for this season, basically. So I don't have that anymore. And then the trainers I got under the New Balance ones. I bought these in Copenhagen last summer after having seen all the Danish girls look amazing in their dad New Balance trainers um, and I loved them I loved them for about a month literally that was it um, and I do still wear them because I wear them to go to the gym and I wear them to run errands in but in terms of styling and how they look it is they're just not for me they were one of the trends I bought into um, and thankfully like I said it's been a piece I can still wear for practical reasons but styling wise definitely not I'm 100% just hit myself in the face 100 percent more into like a canvas style trainer so this whole outfit i've recreated in terms of it's a jumper tailor trousers and trainers but it's completely different so instead i've gone with my ray wool trousers um like i said these and the stories ones are great but the ray ones are a similar style but the fit of them and the way they just sit on the body is so much better. I think it's mostly because they're wool, so they're a lot thicker, so they've just got a lot more structure in how they sit. Um, but they are, they're so good. I love them so much. So I swapped out the trousers for the Ray ones. And then to keep it all quite tonal, I put on one of my favorite jumpers, which is the one from Everlay. They've actually done this exact jumper now in like a um, funnel neck, funnel neck? Not quite a turtleneck, anyway, a high neck. Um, I really want it. I'm really thinking about ordering it for winter because this jumper has been so good. I love the length of it. It's the perfect length to just tuck the front into your trousers and it kind of can hang out around the back, but it, it's not too long so it's draping around the back. It's not too long that you've got loads of fabric to kind of manage into your trousers. Then you feel all uncomfortable, a bit bulgy around your waistband. So yeah, love this jumper. And then the trainers, my Superga ones, which are so gross and so grubby but i still love them i was wearing them last night actually and um, i still love them so much and i love this outfit i actually think i might wear this out this exact outfit that i recreated this week because when i put it on i was like oh yeah i like this um okay two more i'm going to go through <clears throat> this one's from the 5th of october so it's getting a bit colder this one was significant because through the winter i spent a lot of time wearing skinnier leg jeans as opposed to uh, more straight or wider leg ones these were from Levi's, from their authorised vintage, and me starting to wear that kind of jean was quite, I'm turning, I'm using quite dramatic phrasing, but it was a turning point in how I styled boots in particular. So I wore my church's boots a lot through last winter, I will continue to wear them a lot through this winter, but I suddenly loved wearing them with something that was still a straight leg jean, but was just a bit skinnier. It felt quite a bit more chic, and I wore these ones a lot, my totem washed black ones a lot with my, church's boots and then that combined with a huge oversized jacket this is my ray wool one. Oh my gosh i've worn this so much it's actually currently in amsterdam 
Ben has it. So for this outfit, I have put on my Gap one, which is a new one, which is an amazing alternative to the Rain one. The Rain one, I don't think is even available anymore, but if you've always loved it, this Gap one's a great alternative. Similar style, like oversized work shirt, wool jacket. They're really bloody warm. And because they're quite oversized, you can also put big knits under it. And I just wore, I have worn this Ray one so, so, so much. It's one of the best pieces I've ever bought, I think. Um, so yeah, the Gap one is definitely a great alternative. And I've already been wearing that one lots because like I said, I don't have my Ray one here. Um, but yeah, they're just so good. And that with the skinnier like jeans I loved. They're just a white t-shirt. I've actually got no idea what white t-shirt this is. I can't tell from the picture. Um, oh, did I tag? I didn't even tag the t-shirt. So I've just put on here... Um, one from Arquette. The bag I'm holding here is my Sophie Hume bolt bag, which I still do use. I tend to use it a lot more for practical errandy kind of days when I want to wear something crossbody. So um, instead, for this one, I have put on, which bag did I use for this? Oh, my Bottega I put on for, to add a bit more different color into the whole outfit as well, but really any of the bags I have would have worked. This outfit, I remember how much I loved this outfit. Um, and it was so simple, I just felt so good in it. This is the first time I wore my church's brogues out. Um, they've been a bit of a bugger in that they took a while to break in and then by the, by the time I stopped wearing them in like the beginning of summer, they were really comfy. And then I've been starting to wear them again and they're back to being really uncomfortable, which makes me think it's more about my feet <laughs> getting used to wearing them as opposed to the shoe actually getting comfier. Um, and because they're not breaking in, they look great because they just look like new. Um, but they are, they're just painful, which is really annoying me and I'm not sure whether to, I wouldn't want to not have them, I love them so much, but I wasn't sure whether to get another pair that were matte black, so not patent leather, maybe the Cos ones, which I've heard really good ones about, the Doc Martin ones as well, which are a bit clumpier, um, I'm not sure I'm going to think about it because I love those church ones so much, it's just annoying me that they, I just can't seem to fully break them in. Uh, but I'm going to keep going with them. And even if I got another pair, I know I'd still wear them loads. But they were also a purchase that felt like a bit of a turning point in how more comfortable I got wearing really androgynous outfits. So here I've got them with some rouge jeans, the Topshop belt and under the stories jumper. And I have my um, Dior bag. You can't see in this picture, but I can remember it. My hair is so dark at the top in this picture. I quite like it like that. Um, anyway, I... Yeah, the jeans, I don't have any more. They were always a bit big around the crotch and they gave a lot. They didn't hold their shape well. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend rouge for jeans. So instead I've got on some from System, which I bought not long after this um, this picture was taken. Because um, they just fit a lot better, but are a similar wash and everything. And I love them and they've held their shape really well. And then again, I've swapped obviously the belt for my Chanel one. And I have the same jumper on. This exact jumper I'm wearing, this one, I shrunk in the wash and was gutted over and then thankfully under the stories restocked it so i repurchased it because it's probably one of the most worn jumpers ever in my wardrobe and i still really love it and um, if you were wanting to jump a like that but you were wanting to invest a little bit more in something um ray have a very 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 beautiful one that isn't too dissimilar it's obviously a lot pricier but it's beautiful so i'll leave that link in the description box just in case you were someone who preferred to really invest in your knitwear put the under the stories one i wholeheartedly recommend i love it um and yeah like i said my dior bag i've continued to wear so much oh that is it i thought this would be a nice little catch-up video of thinking about how um just how my style has developed and what the small changes are and the pieces that i still love i think thankfully lots of the pieces i've mentioned are still available so links for everything will be in the description box um and i will see you in the next one testing basics is coming soon for loungewear i promise it's taking me so long um and yeah i think that's everything thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon